So, here, now, how do you feel about your relationship? Tell me, uh, today, how do you feel about you and Zara? Um, we could have left soon. What? I have a feeling that ship has sailed. Um, well, I think I can get them back. I have to get them back. Many of your problems as a couple seem to have spiralled out of the birth. A new baby can be a neutron bomb in the life of a young couple. Young? I thank you. Please, engage. And I don't mean just look for the next wisecrack. Is it love? I am not going to lose you. Is it love? Zara, this is your life. Should I blame you? The birth. So That's the thing about being a doctor. You know all the things that can go wrong. And sometimes, it's the way it's how helpless we are. Just like him, again you lost I think a part of it, a big part of it, was when they told us that he could die. So please just Daniel wasn't high on my list of priorities. There was a bit of me saying, we've got to look after ourselves, but I can't help thinking. Is it, love? it was her love that kept him alive. Sounds like you admire her. Have you told her this? No. Is it love? Sense that it cut me off. Maybe I did shut him out, and maybe I did make him feel like he could do nothing right. If Joe is unhappy, he cries. Daniel's unhappy, and he goes and screws his midwife, who also just coincidentally happens to be his best friend's wife. That is Daniel Schott at Dad of the Year. Please just hold me. Is it love? And how do you feel it love? Why would you jeopardise it? It's classic self-destructive behavior. If you two were to resolve your differences, what would you want of him? I'd want him to be perfect. I was only trying to get him to stop crying. I'd like to hear more about your mother and father. She died young, didn't she? Don't insult me by trying to turn this round to me. I'm just trying to understand the situation from your point of view. I do not have daddy issues, and you are not going to psychoanalyze I'm me. I'm not qualified to. Oh, tell me something I don't know. Our family backgrounds impact the way we interact when we have children. This experience shapes the family that you're trying to create. You were losing control of your life. You were emotionally drained cut out of the family group in your own home. The notes from the first sessions, Dr. Clark thought that you were suffering from some form of postnatal depression. I was angry. She didn't trust me with my own son. Why? 
don't know. Um, the cherry thing, uh, maybe shaking him. She completely overreacted. So you weren't in complete control. Why are you asking this? Because you need to see things from her point of view. Do children need a perfect family? Or do they need their family to be perfect enough? It seems to me that sometimes children who've lost a parent sometimes have an idealised vision of a family. I'm a doctor. I don't have any illusions about perfect families. And I can tell you that children, vulnerable as they are, are tough little blighters. You know you wouldn't harm Joe. But throw in anger, the way you were then, postnatal depression, that's what happens in many child deaths. A momentary loss of control and... Maybe she saw that in herself. And professionally, you must have seen stressed parents, scared of their weakest moments. Good people, in moments of weakness, sometimes do bad things. You lost your mother. When I was 14. It's still a traumatic loss. OK, listen to me. Tell me something. Did Daniel get asked about his family in these sessions? Show and tell. <sighs> Goodbye. Zara. I will not have my family made into the problem here. Hey, hey, hey. What? Go away. What happened? Hello, yes, I need a cab. All right, I will hold. Sarah. These sessions are not for me. Please, please, okay, this is our life. One day, that was the deal. All right, look, um, you see this through today and I'll do anything you want, okay? No complaints, no nothing. I'll even move out of the house tonight, okay? You and Joe can have it for as long as you want. Anything I want? Yes. These sessions are not gonna be about blaming me. All right. Well, I thought we made great progress this morning. I've got an exercise for you both. I would like you, Daniel the doctor, to imagine that you're sitting in your consulting room and in walks Daniel the man and tells you all about what he's been through. What would your professional advice be to him? i uh, tell me. Him. I wouldn't want to get involved, for one thing. But if he was sitting in front of me, then he has to take responsibility for his actions. That's probably the sensible professional advice, but he brought it on himself. And uh, so he has to. Keep going. So he has to prepare for a life and a future without his family. Actions have consequences, right? So he has to look after himself now. I mean, he has to, of course, make sure that everything's taken care of, but he needs to focus on new possibilities and his freedom again. I'm not saying I'm just trying to get him to focus on the positives. Oh, so there are positives. Not really, but if he doesn't focus on something, then all he's got is despair. And what does Daniel the man think of Daniel the doctor's advice? I'd say he's a quack. I'd say he doesn't understand my situation, that I have to fight for my family. 
I'd say he's never been faced with losing his family or his woman, even if she does drive him around the twist half the time. It's probably safe professional advice, but if he thinks it's possible, he's never had his heart broken. So I won't be able to do what he's telling me. I would tell her. Nice shoes, Zara. Well, thank you, Zara. I love your shoes, too. All right, all right. I would tell her to put herself and her child first. He doesn't deserve you. So stick to your guns, girlfriend. Go, Zara. Go, Zara. You're not taking this entirely seriously. This is a stupid exercise. If she... If I... <sighs> Look, I am a doctor. I'm not her girlfriend. If it was something medical, I could help her. Otherwise... Rubbish. Otherwise, I would be thinking, what clothes am I going to wear tomorrow? Absolute rubbish. Your wardrobe is planned and hung a week in advance. <sighs> Daniel, I don't think this is helping. She would be thinking, get a grip and sort it out. Yes, he got caught putting it where he shouldn't, but does he deserve to lose everything? And you know he would never harm the baby. So don't get precious with me. You love the bones of him because of the strife, not despite it. And she'd also be thinking, let him suffer a bit first. He deserves a bit of that. Do be quiet, Daniel. I know how you think. OK, and I am so, so sorry I cheated on you. But it was never about her. The time I just wanted to lash out. And let's face it, there's nobody else that I could have slept with that would have hurt you more. Why would you want to hurt me? Because I was ill! <laughs> and because you were destroying me. I was a mess, OK? All that aside for now, the point is, Daniel knows you. He gets you better than anyone else. Is that fair to say? And what he said, an accurate account of what you would really be thinking? He knows me better than anyone else does. I will give him that. If Sarah was my patient... What you say here doesn't get thrown back at you outside. That's the deal. Yes. If Sarah came to me genuinely fearing for the safety of her child... I mean, forget all the stuff about her and her bloke cheating on her, that's their business, nothing to do with me. But if she felt that she couldn't trust her child to his father, then I'd say she was right to get out of the relationship. And I'd be on the phone to social services on her behalf. <laughs> that's something that's changed in me. I can't blame you for being angry about me shaking Joe. Wouldn't the child's future be better with its mother and father if they can resolve their issues? Yes, if there's trust. But sometimes with all the love and the best will in the world, people still lose control. They still snap. What is this? Some kind of reverse psychology. I think we could do with the breather. Water. My turn. I honestly think he was having a midlife crisis. If he asked for help in understanding why he did this, how on earth am I supposed to know? Please, try. <sighs> well, this woman, this 
Princess Bubblegum. It's clearly nothing to do with her. That wouldn't be a midlife crisis. That would be a midlife meltdown. No, she's in irrelevance. This was about lashing out at some kind of perceived grievance against him from his better half, trying to hurt her. So far, so Daniel. But has he? What do you mean? Well, is it possible that Daniel's behaviour wasn't about hurting you? Or Joe? Least of all Joe. Then who would it be about? Let me be Daniel. I betrayed my partner and my best friend. Is that about them or about me? About you, I suppose. Why would I do that? Please, Doctor, I need your help. Because you don't like your life? But I have a great life. A beautiful partner, a beautiful child, a good job. So that's not everything that you wanted? It can't have been. Well, then, look, I am not a therapist or a psychiatrist or whatever, but it seems to me that... It seems to me that... that maybe you feel like you don't deserve happiness. Or maybe you feel like your freedom has been taken away and you just can't. I think I've been depressed. Postnatal depression for men. An old husband's tale. Well, let's just call it depression. It can happen to anyone at any time, right? Yes. Does that make me a bad person? No, of course not. I love my son, but um, sometimes things seem so dark. I pick him up to get him to stop crying. I feel as if I'm losing control. I'd never hurt him, but I'm scared. Do I deserve punishment? Of course not. I feel as if I'm in a cycle. Depression, self-destruction, which makes me more depressed. C can this cycle be broken? Please, Doctor, help me. Yes. Yes, I can help you. You're not alone. We can help you. W what help? How? Well, we can prescribe medication, or we can suggest that you take a course of... Therapy, which can often prove very effective. You acknowledge that professionally, sometimes you see new fathers who are depressed. And forget about the label, postnatal. We all get hung up on labels as a doctor. Did you see? Depression in Daniel. And do you see that Daniel was ill? Zara doesn't do half measures. She needs things to be perfect, because this is her one shot at being a mother. I thought you weren't going to psychoanalyse me. I'm not claiming that's insightful analysis. It just seems obvious. Am I wrong? It would go a long way if you acknowledge that. Yes. And one thing we can work on is helping you to see that not being perfect is OK. I know that. Now, your relationship, um, do you know about fly-by-wire avionics? When a plane is stable, getting it to change direction requires effort. So the computer keeps the plane permanently not quite stable. So it's much more responsive. That's great for fighter planes and aerobatics. Some relationships are fly-by-wire, controlled instability. Some people love that, some people can't take the instability. So tell us, which are we? Well, that's what I'd like to explore in the weeks ahead. If the will is there to do it. Daniel? Yes, definitely. Zara? Okay. Good.
Sorry, you're mad at Daniel. Yes. Daniel, you're mad at Zara. Sometimes. That's passion. You're mad because you care. Agreed? We have something to build on. <clears throat> you stopped communicating. Daniel, I want you to tell Zara what you told me earlier. Not, not now, later on. Okay. And it doesn't mean that you have to communicate relentlessly. You just need to refine that equilibrium where you communicate enough. We need to go back to basics. So I want you to try something. Another exercise. Yes. I want you to date for three weeks. No touching, no physical contact whatsoever. Can you do that? Say something. I'm sick of talking. You know that thing I was supposed to tell you later? I told David how much I admire you. It was when Joe was ill. I was so weak. And he needed us. And you delivered. I didn't. I want to thank you for that. And whatever happens, I will always admire you for it. We shouldn't sleep in the same bed. Not while we're dating. Agreed? Yeah. So, first date. Tuesday. Lunch. Do I mean the rules. The theme of today's show is 10 things I hate about you. I can't go through with it. Of course you can. You're playing crap music and giving dodgy advice. I'd stick with giving injections and wiping up sick. Switch that off. He's done enough damage for one day. Come on, have a couple. Come on, go on then. Ian begs.